the morning of January 8th was like kind of any other Thursday. It was kind of a nice day, Bluebird. Actually, it was the first day of the season that we were going to go out skiing with a bunch of the AFP guys, you know, Schuster and Andrew. It was my daughter Quinn's ski lesson day, and Schuster's kid Gray's in the same class, so we like dropped her girls off at Alpine, like 9 a.m., jumped on Summit Chair, the three of us. Feeling the sun in our face, blue skies, not a lot of people up there. Looked over and saw that they had groomed Wolverine Bowl. We're like, warm up run, let's go rip that. Or it wasn't the most epic powder day where you're like, oh man, we gotta go big or whatever. I mean, literally it was our warm up run. When I came up on him, his helmet had been cracked and he had a little bit of blood on his forehead. It wasn't until we started talking uh, that I was figuring out it was very serious and I didn't want to move him at all or do anything like that until the patrol got there. So we dropped in and started ripping big GS turns and got to the first little roller, pre-jumped that so I didn't send it too big. I landed that fine, I just scrubbed a bunch of speed before the next kind of bigger roller. Got up to that and pre-jumped it. And as soon as I got into the air, I was just like, oh man, this is not gonna end well. Because I just knew at that moment I had way too much speed for what little sort of transition was there. You know, I just like went right over the handlebars and landed on my head. There was so much force going forward that my right ski released. So it kind of flipped all the way up and probably hit me in the back of the head. And that sort of motion like burst fractured my L1 vertebrae. I was just laying there and the thoughts that kept going through my head were like, I have two young daughters. How am I gonna walk these girls down the aisle? I have a wife at home, like, how am I going to keep my commitments to her and, you know, being a good husband and father and a life of adventure together? My surgeon told this to Heather. He said, this is a very significant surgery and the recovery is going to be extensive. The less stress that Eric can feel and experience, the better his recovery is going to be. I don't remember the exact day that we flew home, but uh, the next day I was out at High Fives in the C.R. Johnson Healing Center starting my outpatient therapy. They say the first six months is like the sort of steepest recovery curve. Having that resource right there and being able to maximize that peak recovery time was just crucial in getting me back to where I wanted to go. Well, we all know there's risk involved with this sport. One of the biggest decisions you have to make is how am I going to mitigate that risk and what kind of risk am I willing to take? If you go in blind and you're going to ski fast, you're accepting a lot of risks that you have no idea what that outcome might be. If you're going 15, 20 miles an hour, you hit a tree, you can do some damage. If you're going 60, you can do some really bad damage. Well, as a ski racer, I would push it so hard that I'd blow out or make a mistake, but then I'd be able to reel it back in, learn from that, okay, I had to give up the gain. There's a lot of consequences, you know, with speed and, and pushing yourself. You have to be really confident and fully commit once you go over all those other little details and, and kind of like check the boxes. It's like walking upstairs, man, one step at a time and you eventually get higher.